Welcome to Trigonometry at Dallas College. I am Professor Michael Bailey at Brookhaven Campus. Today we're going to start with Chapter 1, looking at angles and trigonometric functions. We're going to focus on some basic terminology, uh, degree measure, standard position, coterminal angles, and some additional vocabulary. So as we start, there are two distinct points determine a line AB. So we know this from geometry before, that if we connect any two points um, with the straight segment, we have a line and we identify that as line AB. A line segment is the portion of the line between A and B, including points A and B, but notice it doesn't continue on. A line is continuous where a segment is not. An array is a portion of the line AB that starts at A and continues through B and on past B. So notice that array is basically a line that goes in one direction. An angle consists of two rays in the plane that have a, a common endpoint, and you can see the image here on the right. The two rays are the sides of the angle <clears throat> with a common endpoint is called the vertex of the angle, as you can see here in the image. And we have an angle's measure is generated by a rotation about the vertex. The ray in its initial position is called the initial side of the angle. You can see it labeled here. The ray in its location after the rotation is the terminal side of the angle. And again, you can see it labeled here. A positive angle is when we rotate from one ray to the other in a counterclockwise direction. You can see that here we're starting at what looks like the x-axis and we go almost all the way around. A negative angle starts at the initial side but rotates in a clockwise direction and you can see this in the second example at the bottom of the page. The most common unit for measuring angles is called the degree and a complete rotation of a ray in one full circle gives an angle whose measure is 360 degrees. You've probably heard this before doing a 360 if you're a skateboarder or you've watched any um, skating Olympics um, or actually you know a lot of the X Factor games now. Um, when you see people snowboarding, etc., or doing tricks on skis, doing 360s and 720s, which they're doing two full rotations and more. So one 360th of a complete rotation gives an angle whose measure is one degree. Since we have this angle, um, since we go one full rotation around a circle is 360 degrees, so if we do one out of 360, we get one degree. Angles are classified by their measures or the size of their angles, the degree measure. An acute angle is an angle between zero and 90 degrees. Notice it does not include a zero or a 90 degree angle. It's between those two. A right angle is a corner and the angular measure, the degree measure is 90 degrees exactly. Obtuse angles are between 90 and 180 degrees, 90 and 180. So a little more than a corner and not quite a straight line. And then a straight angle is an, is an angle whose measure is exactly 180 degrees. Complementary angles combine to make a right angle. And you can see here that a right angle is a corner and complementary begins with CO like corner. So complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. Supplementary angles 
combine to make a straight angle. And again, supplementary begins with S, just like straight begins with S. So these angles combine to make a degree measure of 180 degrees. So let's try our first example here. For an angle measuring 40 degrees, find the measure of its complement and its supplement. Now remember, a complementary angles make a corner or 90 degrees. So we first have to find the other angle that when added to 40 equals 90. And we can do that by subtracting that 40 degree angle from 90. And here we can see that the complementary angle of 40 degrees is an angle of 50 degrees because together they add up to 90. Doing a similar thing with a supplementary angle, recognizing that they add up to 180, we subtract the uh, 40 degree angle from 180 to find its supplement and we get 140 degrees because 140 plus 40 equals 180. Finding measures of complementary and supplementary angles, another example we might look at, an algebraic example, is an image here where we see that these two angles are complementary because they add up to a right angle. You know this is a right angle because it has this little box, this little square in the corner, which is an indicator that this is an exact measure of 90 degrees. <coughs> Here we don't have degree measures in terms of actual values, but in terms of variables. So this measure of 6x plus this angle of 3x have to add up to 90. So we create a, an algebraic equation, equation with just those values and um, variables. So we get 6x plus 3x this angle plus this angle equals 90, and then we solve for x. Now be careful, a lot of times when we're first starting classes and we get an answer, we solve for x, that was the end of the problem. But that is not the end of the problem. It didn't ask us to find out what x equals. It asked us to find the measure of each of the angles. So now we need to go back and plug in x to each of these angles to figure out what are the actual angle measures, not what is just the value of x. And when we do that, we get an angle of 60 and an angle of 30. Similarly, we can do a very, uh, a, another problem for supplementary angles. Again, here we're going to add the two angles, but this time we're going to make them equal to 180 because as we can see, together they form a straight angle. We solve this and we get x equals 18. And again, we go back because we don't want to know what x is as much as we want to know what the two angles are. When we plug that in, we get um, one angle is 72 degrees and the other angle is 108. We can also break down degrees into a smaller units of minutes and seconds. And the nice part about this is that it works intuitively well with our understanding of time. So one minute is 100, excuse me, one sixtieth of a degree. This means that one minute equals one over 60 degrees, or that 60 minutes, 60 minutes equals one degree. You might think of this like 60 minutes equals one hour. So one minute is one sixtieth of an hour. So if you think of degrees and hours in a similar light, this should help with this conversion. And a second, just like in time, one second is one sixtieth of a minute. Therefore, um, one <clears throat> second, notice the notation here, I didn't mention this before, but notice for a minute it's an apostrophe. One um, apostrophe it means one minute in terms of our um, angular measures. And one second is an um, it's a quotation mark of two apostrophes. So one second equals one sixtieth of a minute. It also equals one three thousand six hundredth of a degree. And that's just one over 60 times one over 60. 60 times 60 in the denominator would give us 3600. Or oh, we can also say that 60 seconds 
equals one minute. So again, while this is a little bit confusing because we're adding degrees in here, if you keep your mindset on time, um, it should be pretty straightforward or at least intuitive to you. Okay, think of degrees as hours. So 60 minutes is one degree, um, 60 seconds is one minute, etc. All right. <clears throat> We can also do calculations, addition and subtraction, um, using degrees, minutes, and seconds. So this is important that we um, add the same units and kind of do them with the kind of an idea of carrying, etc. And we add them individually. So we add the degrees and the minutes separately. So here we get when we add 51 degrees 29 minutes plus 32 degrees 46 minutes. When we add the degrees, we get 83 degrees. 51 plus 32 is 83. When we add the minutes, 29 plus 46, we get 75 minutes. Now the problem here is we don't want to ever go over 60 because as soon as we hit 60 minutes, we have another degree. So this is like simplifying a fraction when your minutes or seconds are over 60, we have to convert them into the next higher unit. So notice that 75 minutes is the same thing as um, 1 degree and 15 minutes, right? Because uh, 60 minutes is 1 degree. So we take that out and we have 15 minutes left. So now we can add that additional degree to the 83 degree to get our final answer of 84 degrees, 15 minutes. In part B, we're doing subtraction, and, and we're going to do this similarly where we borrow. Notice we just have 90 degrees, we don't have any minutes to subtract from, so we're going to have to borrow one degree out of the 90 and turn that into 60 minutes so we can do this subtraction problems. So 90 degrees is the same as 89 degrees 60 minutes, and now we're able to subtract the 73 degrees and the 12 minutes. Again, we're going to do each piece separately. 89 minus 73 gives us 16 degrees. 60 minus 12 gives us 48 minutes. And so um, the minutes are not over 60. They're not negative, so we don't have to do anything here. And this is our final answer. We can also convert minutes and degrees, excuse me, degrees, minutes, and seconds to a decimal degree answer. Okay. So here we're going to use those fractional values. <clears throat> excuse me. We're going to use those fractional values that we came up with when we were defining what a minute and a second is. Remember that eight minutes, one minute is one over 60 degrees. So eight minutes <clears throat> is eight over 60. Remember that 14, I mean, excuse me, one second is one over 3,600 degrees. So 14 seconds is 14 over 3,600 degrees. Here, all we're going to do is convert each of these into a decimal, 8 divided by 60. So we're going to do 74 plus 8 divided by 60 plus 14 divided by 3,600. You can do this in your calculator because your calculator will do the order of operations in the correct manner. And we get 74 degrees, excuse me, 74 0.137 degrees. We can do this in another way too by converting from decimal degrees to degrees, minutes, and seconds. Okay, so here we have 34 degrees plus 0.817 degrees. So what we want to do is convert this decimal portion into minutes first and see what we get. Remember that there are 60 minutes in every degree, so we multiply the degree here, the decimal degree, by 60, and we get 49.02 minutes. Here again, what we want to do is get rid of this decimal part, 0.02 minutes, and turn it into seconds by multiplying it also by 60, because remember, there are 60 seconds in a minute. Now be careful. In this way, we're going to be multiplying only by 60 because we're stepping down through, okay? So we get 0 0.02 times 60, and we get 1.2 seconds. Because we're interested in degrees, minutes, and seconds, we are going to round 
to the nearest second, and so we get 34 degrees, 49 minutes, and one second. Okay? All right, some more terminology here. An angle is in standard position. An angle is in standard position if its vertex is at the origin, think of the Cartesian system, the graphing system, X and Y grid, and its initial side lies along the positive X axis, okay? This is a standard angle, okay? Both of these are examples of standard angle. The first one ends in quadrant one. The second angle ends in quadrant two. We could be anywhere around this whole Cartesian system. The idea here is the standard angles start at the x-axis, the positive x-axis. Quadrantal angles are angles who start and end on the x and y axis. So what you have here is a quadrantal angle example of 90 degrees. It starts at x and goes up to the y. If it continued on to the negative x-axis, it would be a quadrantal angle of 180. If it continued around to the negative y, three quarters away around the circle, we'd have a 270 degree circle. Okay? If it went one whole revolution, we could call this either a zero degree angle or a 360 degree angle, which is also an example of a quadrantal. <coughs> More terminology, coterminal angles. A complete rotation of a ray, remember when we go one full circle around, we get an angle whose measure is 360 degrees. By continuing the rotation, angles of measure larger than 360 can be produced. These angles are called coterminal angles. This means that wherever you stop, like see this first angle is 60 degrees. If we if we start from that angle of 60 degrees and do a full circle, we get to an angle whose measure is 420. That's 360 degrees plus 60 degrees. Okay? These two angles are called coterminal. Here in the second example, we have the initial angle is 120, excuse me, 110 degrees. And what we've done here, what they've done here is rotate it around twice, 360 and another 360, which is a total of 720. When we add those together, we get an angle of 830 degrees, okay? These two angles are coterminal because again, this 830 is the same measure of 110 plus a multiple of 360 degrees. This is important because coterminal angles perform similarly in trigonometry. So remember the measures of coterminal angles, angles differ by a multiple of 360 degrees. Find the least, find the angle of least positive measure coterminal with an angle of 908 degrees. So we're looking for an angle between 0 and 360. So what we can do here is just keep subtracting 360 from 908, because it's larger than 360, until we find an angle that is between 0 and 360. If we do that, if we subtract um, two, two revolutions, or 2 times 360, we get to an angle of 188. And you could have done this one at a time. 908 minus 360, you'd still have an angle that's larger than 360. Subtract 360 from that number again, and then you would have ended up at 188. So an angle of 188 is considered coterminal with an angle of 908 degrees. Find the angle of least positive measure coterminal with an angle of negative 75. Since we're in a negative area, we have a negative angle, and we want a positive angle, what we're going to do is add 360 to this until we get an angle between 0 and 360. In this case, we only need to add 360 once, and what we get is an angle of 285. So notice a negative 75 degree angle is really equivalent or coterminal to a 285 degree angle, a positive 285. 
Find the angle of least positive measure coterminal with an angle of negative 800. Similar to the last one, we're just going to keep adding 360 degrees until you get a positive angle between 0 and 360. Um, here they've recognized that 1080 or 3 times 360 would um, give us that angle, but I like it better if you do it in a more pragmatic and almost a finger counting way of just taking negative 800, put it in your calculator, plus 360, plus 360, plus 360. And then you, what you would have found is that you would have got an angle of 280 degrees. So you don't have to figure out how many multiples of 360 are, are correct for this. You just keep adding 360 because it's negative until you get to a positive angle. To find an expression that will generate every angle coterminal with this given angle, we simply add integer multiples of 360 to that given angle. Remember, integers are 1, 2, 3. They're your counting numbers, your whole, whole positive numbers. For example, then they actually they don't even have to be positive. For example, the expression for all angles coterminal with 60 degrees is 60 degrees plus n, this is your integer value, times 360, okay? If we look at a table for finding some of those, for example, if n is 2, then we get the angle of 780 degrees. 60 plus 2 times 360 gives us 780. This is coterminal. If n is 1, we get 420. If n is 0, we get the actual angle. If we make n equal negative 1, again, integers are positive and negative whole numbers, we get 60 plus negative 1 times 360, or negative 300. Okay? So you can see the very um, different ways of, exp the, of not only calculating these angles, but of expressing all of the possible angles that are equivalent or coterminal with an original angle. So let's look at one more problem from chapter 1.1, analyzing the revolutions of a disk drive. So we're going to start looking at some applications here. A, the, a constant angular velocity disk drive spins a disk at a constant speed. Suppose a disk makes 480 revolutions per minute. Through how many degrees will a point on the edge of a disk move in two seconds? Well, the first thing I notice here is that we're talking about different units of time. Here we're talking the speed is given in per minute, and yet we want to figure out how many degrees is in a second. Okay? So remember that a revolution, one revolution is 368 degrees, um, but also that's per minute. So we have to figure out how many seconds are in a minute and turn this into seconds. So let's do that first. So the disk revolves 480 times in one minute, or 480 over 60, because this is now in seconds. 480 over one minute is the same thing as 480 over 60 seconds. When we do this division, we get that the disk revolves, does a revolution eight times per second. Okay. So we want to know how many degrees it will go through in two seconds. Well, how many revolutions will it go through in two seconds? If it goes through eight times, eight revolutions in one second, then it will revolve 16 times in two seconds. Now, again, we're not at our answer because we want to know how many degrees this is. And right now we only have revolutions. Remember that one revolution equals 360 degrees. So we multiply this each revolution up to 16 times 360, and we get 5,760 degrees um, in two seconds. All right, so that's the end of 1.1. We've covered a lot of ground here. If you need to go back and review, please do so, and I'll see you in the next lecture.